Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin by resupplying our spaceport around the Earth using the new kind of system that I introduced in the previous episode and so we're going to be using RTG engines basically uh, the candle engines and here's a Fiji 11 I don't know why I put a white fairing on top there uh, after this we are going to move on to do some Jupiter missions just uh, support missions two Jovian demons which are basically space tugs for Jupiter and we'll see how that goes but first let's uh, identify which core I should load this into usually it's this bottom one but I just want to make sure okay so without further ado run PG 11 at some point I'm going to have to make sure that I write a script so that it does a proper rendezvous with a target instead of just vaguely launching into the right information. I haven't really done any new KOS work in a while. I did that tutorial for stock and really uh, beyond stock there's only a certain amount of refinement that you need to do to make it suitable for realism overhaul unless you get some really fancy configurations. Okay, we have separation of the engine cluster, if you will, with the floats and everything. Separation of the first stage tank and ignition of the J2 stage. So hopefully we will recover the F1 engine. That is the plan. And separation of the fairing. And of course this version has a lot more supplies and less actual fuel because it doesn't really need so much fuel. Just going to lower Earth orbit and everything. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. And shut down. Okay, no fuss. Uh, let me plot for the rendezvous. We've got a one degree inclination. I might choose to use this engine, but probably not. Um, in the upper portion, we have around 700 meters per second, it looks like. And that should be plenty for the rendezvous. And also deorbiting. Okay, I've handled the rendezvous burns. I did use the J2 to correct the inclination. That was about 140 meters per second. And we're approaching this station now. Uh, we've got a 3.5 kilometer gap and we are matching velocities here. We still have 484 meters per second so I don't anticipate any problems though again the RCS thrusters have like a quarter of the efficiency of the main engine so the more we use those the worse off we'll be. But still uh, as far as how much supplies we're carrying we've got this tank, this tank and these are all supplies so I mean really what it should be is a single tank, it's just the fact that it's weird mounting these particular engines. Um, so yeah. I mean legitimately we should actually have just uh, one big thing here and maybe I should change it for that. Otherwise of course it'd be awkward for the crew to actually get the supplies out from the supply vessel. Not that awkward. I mean, I guess you could imagine that this is just a little cubby hole and they can just grab stuff from there and the fuel lines go across into there, but anyway. Okay, we are approaching the dock. Plenty of fuel left. I don't think I'll reduce the fuel load on here though, since it's liquid hydrogen and it doesn't weigh very much anyway. You can see vessel mass 18 tons. I don't think the hydrogen is too much of that. If we take a look, well, serious lag around the station, of course. Um, the hydrogen is only like 0.8 tons, so it's uh, 17 tons of supplies and structure. Um, we only have half the ablator, so, and that's probably good enough. Somebody had asked me to do a video on how to dock in Realism Overhaul, and to be honest, um, while I can do it, I'm not too sure if I'm the best person to explain it. Um, a big part of what helps is just using Smart ASS's uh, negative parallel function, uh, which sets your current heading to be opposite the heading of the docking port. So, and then you just set the prograde vector to be on the opposite side of the target marker from where you are. 
So basically I should actually have it right around there-ish, maybe a little bit like that. And then eventually what that'll do is you'll start sliding closer and closer to the target marker until you write over it, at which point the prograde vector should be right over the target marker and your center point as well. And then you should be able to just go straight in. Obviously, the key thing is not to do everything very quickly, but I don't know what I would make a video out of, really, because that's it. That's basically it. So it just takes practice after that. And, you know, rendezvous is a separate sort of thing. Those That has different rules. Docking, you just can't be going faster than 0.2 meters per second when you actually expect to make contact. And then some docking ports have particular rotational needs. So you have to keep that in mind. Some docking ports are not omni-rotational. In other words, however you rotate it is fine. All the stock docking ports are like that. But you can see as we get closer to the target marker, I bring the program marker closer in. And so now we're basically in line with the target, keeping in mind that this negative parallel orientation ensures that our docking port is directly you know facing the target docking port and not at some weird angle that's the important part of using this and then ultimately we're going to slow to 0.2 meters per second which is our docking speed okay that's 0.2 as we get closer it'll tend to wander a little bit sometimes but don't overcorrect. Just always setting the prograde marker the same distance away from the target marker that your center line is. And we have connection. That's it. So Let's see about moving the supplies in so that we can deorbit this. Okay, well it doesn't look like we can pack all the water in if we want to bring this back down. I really need a sort of unified supply module instead of... Because right now we've got some room for supplies here, some supplies there, some here, some there, some everywhere. And it's sort of a mess. But the point is, we've got one year and 216 days of food. Three years of water, that's why bringing some back down probably won't be too bad, and two years of oxygen. And on here, a little bit of water there, more water, uh, some water there. So we're going to be bringing some water back down, and that'll be just how it is. So let's bring the supply vessel back down so it doesn't clutter things up. But really, uh, another sort of a supply module here would be a good idea. Gotta say... Um, we don't really need much solar power, so the solar arrays are sort of small in comparison to real life, aren't they? Hmm. Something about the solar request. Well, hold on. First of all, do we have a scientist on board? No. So another thing we need to do is just send a scientist up for the mobile processing lab. And that'll probably take some power, and then we'll have a reason to expand our solar arrays. Not that I necessarily want to have to send more solar rays, but, you know, it would look better. Anyway, undock. And let's make sure we're controlling from here. And RCS on, back up. We are 7 tons now. Basically, we sent 10 tons of supplies out to the station. And indeed, the food and oxygen are clear, even though we're still carrying some water. Well, if everything goes the same as the other mission did, I don't see any reason to think that there's going to be any problems. It's the same shape and everything. Got a little bit less later, but it's also coming down from low Earth orbit. And the other one survived coming down from the moon. Okay, we are at 70 kilometers in altitude and flame effects have started. And slowing down. 
No apparent problems. Okay, we are through the worst of it. We have parachute deployment. Smart ASS is off. Alright, we have full parachute deployment. And let's get to splashdown. Woo! Okay, alright. Very vigorous splashdown. And recover vessel. It's difficult to overstate how expensive that craft is, by the way. We got 25,000 funds back from it. And uh, that's thankfully 92% of its total value. We splashed down fairly close to Florida. But yeah, really expensive. The engines, we can spot them here. Um, looks like they're actually uh, 919 apiece. So uh, that's less than I thought they were. They could. Oh, but the plutonium is the expensive part, I see. Uh, the engine itself, the RTG itself, might be cheap. Well, relatively speaking, but the plutonium is uh, 14,680 funds in total. So, that's expensive. Alright, we're going to basically time warp to this uh, Earth to Jupiter transfer window. Actually, what we should do is, that looks like an alarm clock transfer window. Let's get a more precise window here. Um, no insertion burn, let's say. Um, no, I want this one. Yeah, let's tighten up the time frame. Okay, and add the alarm. Okay, so that says 28 days. We'll go around there. We don't have a whole lot of missions this time around because some of our other missions are already on their way, like Joveport 1 is still on its way to uh, Jupiter at Callisto Mapsat, uh, the you know other long-range missions have been passing by the Mapsats so all of that stuff is still on its way until they're all situated we don't know exactly what we need to send next uh, these are just support missions to tug things around okay so here's our first Jovian Demon launch and well it sure looks interesting as far as total delta V, it's probably not telling the truth. Let's see. Well, we're going to have to send some additional hydrogen if we actually want to use this to do any pushing around, unless some fuel is locked somewhere. Let me see. No, that's, that's all it is. Alright, we are off. So again, two F1 engines on the boosters, an RD-270 at the center. And then the usual J2 stage up there. Alright, uh, looks like I'll have to, oh wait, it separated the boosters. I was afraid I would have to manually do it, but it looks like uh, the script is fine on that. There is no recovery stuff on this portion of the stage, but I kept the decoupler in and it'll decouple off first simply because I didn't want to change the launch script. Or have two versions of the Fiji 2R1 launch script. Well now it seems like we have a lot of Delta V, doesn't it? It was lying to us before. All right, separation of the engine cluster. Okay, separation of the stage. And ignition of the J2. So the J2 will start our trip to Jupiter, but the upper portion will have to complete it. And it looks like the earlier stats were just lying to us. We will have a lot of Delta V to work with here. Well, that's a relief, because I was worried based on what it was showing me before. Look at that, 18,000. Uh, of course, we need uh, 3,600 to make orbit right now. And then we'll need about 6,600 to transfer. So you're talking about more than 10,000, but that means we'll arrive at Jupiter with more than 7,000 left, hopefully. Let me activate the radiators now so that we don't have oil off. 
I stuck some uh, extra RTGs just in case, but of course the engine is uh, reactor itself, so it will produce power. It's one of the ones that makes sound, even when it's off. And that's a solid core nuclear engine here. Hydrogen propellants, uh, same basic stats as a Nerva, except smaller. That's just like a smaller Nerva. I think it's about 40 kilonewtons, so about an eighth of the thrust of a Nerva, but commensurately lighter and smaller, which is good. All right, making orbit, and we're good. Launch program ended. 2,680 meters per second left in this stage. Up, oh, game is a little bit frozen. We'll lose the nose cone while maneuvering. All right, let me plot for Jupiter. Okay, so we are now on our way to Jupiter. We've cleared the nose cone. I forgot to record that part. And the total burn was a little bit less than 6,600 meters per second. We're going to do roughly the first half with the J2 stage, but it won't actually last through the first half. And then we'll have our nuclear engine complete the burn. Right now, our intended location in Jupiter is just a very loose orbit with a low periapsis and high apoapsis so that we can make adjustments to rendezvous with other, other things. The goal of this is to push other things around, but it doesn't really want to use too much fuel on the initial capture. Okay, separation and ignition. And we have good ignition on the solid core nuclear engine. And I'm suddenly afraid that it's gonna take forever for it to do this burn. Whoops! But, I mean, we did the first part of the burn on time. We'll see. I might have made a significant miscalculation with the 1 hour, 4 minute, and 20 second burn time here. It is getting its rate of thrust of about 40 kilonewtons. It's only a 20 ton vessel. We have fuel, we'll make adjustments. We can't really wait and go around again because we're pretty close to escape right now anyway. Well, on the bright side, at least we're trying to hit Jupiter. So the fact that we're well off of our intended trajectory probably won't hurt that much. We'll see. Well, it's been 24 minutes in game time since the maneuver node. Uh, thankfully, in real time, I've been using physics warp. And you can see how far away we are from Earth, so it's not exactly the most efficient burn ever. Uh, but on the bright side, we're relatively close to the prograde vector. So in that respect, at least we're not doing a huge radial burn. So that part is okay. Taking a look at what's actually happening would be a good idea. And we can see our orbit shaping up. Uh, Apoapsis is a little bit further along than we were intending. You know, we were intending for it to be over there. It's ending up over here. But looking at where we were intending to hit Jupiter, that's not too bad. We'll see how it all works out. Well, looking at how this is shaping up, I don't think this amount of remaining delta V is accurate. I think it'll lead us to overburn. So we're going to pay attention here. And drop out time warp. Up oh, there we go. Um, let's focus on Jupiter. OK, uh, shut down. That's fine. We'll have a mid-course adjustment to bring that down. There is a residual sound with this engine that you may or may not be able to hear. But let's get, uh, not, not in six years, I want on that orbit, that that orange one, please. Um, as usual, it doesn't want me to make a little node, come on. 
Well, it's not the best approach to Jupiter I've ever seen, but with this mid-course adjustment of 228 meters per second, we get a reasonable approach, and uh, Jupiter periapsis that is as close to it as I think is safe. So we're going to add that alarm. I had to actually get out of the SOI of Earth in order to make this node, and even then it didn't want to let me actually make a node, so that was irritating. Uh, I had to do some tricks with MechJeb in order to make it happen. So that node, add alarm. Okay, we have to launch one more of these, and then maybe I'll take care of this. No, I'll, I'll probably save that for the next episode, just to start off with something concrete before moving on to other things. That Jupiter Low Orbit Mission Maneuver Node, and we'll have to see about that. I wonder where it is. Ah. There's the Jupiter Low Orbit mission that we'll have to take care of pretty soon, actually. I hope this three days and nine hours is correct. It's right there, and it's coming into Jupiter pretty quickly. You know what? Let's switch to it just briefly to make sure that that, that uh, alarm is correct. Okay, that does seem correct, so no problems there, and I think that leaves us enough time to get the next launch off. If we take a look, VAB... Got a lot of stuff here, but Jovian Demon 2 takes a day to roll out, so it'll be fine. Okay, so here is the second launch, and if it goes as well as the first, we should be in good shape and have some good support around Jupiter for other missions that might need to be brought into a lower orbit than they initially capture at. But uh, as long as they have a docking port, of course. But run Fiji 2R1. Alright, and we're off. Up a little bit of pause as the game digests a 1.8G thrust weight ratio here. Alright, waiting for booster separation, and they're off. Okay, those are away, so we're just on the RD270 now. Converting UDMH and N204. Alright, this stage is about to go out. And off. Separation of that portion. Separation of the tank. And ignition of the J2. Alright, we're good. And there it is. About the same amount of Delta V left in the J2 stage. No big surprises. Alright, off goes the nose cone. Okay, well we're gonna have sort of the same issue as last time with the long burn time of the upper stage, but it worked for the other missions, so we'll just hope for the best here. And just start the burn at the same rough time. Alright, checking the fuel, seems to be very stable, and ignition. And we're going. Okay, separation. And once the game decides it's okay. And ignition. There we go. Okay, it's looking a lot like the previous burn. We're T plus 29 minutes, but as you can see, the orbit is approaching the orbit of Jupiter, and we're probably not going to need the entire 1,000 meters per second here. Let's focus in on Jupiter. Okay, let's get a time warp. Okay, that's about right under Jupiter, close enough. And will it let me make a mid-course adjustment? Well, no. It doesn't like me making a node on on the orbit there. It'll probably let me make one, yeah, it'll let me make one after I hit Jupiter, but that's not very useful. So, and even if I switch back to this, it won't let me... I forget if... I've, I've, recall some sort of trick to make it work out 
But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to time warp so that this gets out. Wait, uh, how much time do we have? Um, yeah, we do have enough time before we have to deal with the Jupiter low orbit mission. So let's get this out. Still can't click on my orbit, so the trick is Megjeb, um, Maneuver Planner, match planes with the target, create node, but that's way too close over there. I want it in the middle of the orbit, so we're going to use Maneuver Node Editor, and I typed in 86, well, 860,000, which is close enough to being 10 days. And I press minus to bring it back to the middle of the orbit. And that will probably cost less than matching planes earlier. Because we don't actually have to match planes. Jupiter will do most of the work once we get there. This might actually be a little bit better than the previous mission, we'll see. Ooh. There was an encounter even with Ganymede. Not too sure that's useful. This is just a tug mission. Probably we should just ignore that so I don't get confused later on. Alright, and how high are we? Way too high? That's pretty good. Alright, so that will be our mid-course adjustment. Let's get that into Kerbal Alarm Clock. And sure, let's do this Jupiter low orbit burn. So this is all set. As far as liquid hydrogen is concerned, we can see there is no boil off. Otherwise it would be 0, 0.00. So it's all good. And on its way. Okay, there's Jupiter. And let's get rid of the alarm and just follow the node. I'm not going to question the node, I'm just going to handle it and we'll see where we can go from there. We do have locked fuel on this and this is supposed to be placed in a low orbit, a particular low orbit, but I don't know if we're going to have enough to get there. It also doesn't have any docking ports so those tugs that we launched this time are not going to work. That will have to take a different sort of mission if we want those to help out. This is actually an RL-10 brought all the way out here thanks to a pair of radiators. Selling the fuel down and ignition. Maybe a little bit early. Gotta watch out for that periapsis though. That must not dip below 1550 kilometers otherwise we're going into Jupiter's atmosphere. It's a fairly low orbit. I mean we're getting an orbital period under two weeks here. So I hope that's all right, as long as the periapsis doesn't go crazy. I mean, taking a look at where it actually is, that is what we've plotted here. Technically, the low orbit we need to get into is this one, so I don't see if that being a particularly easy thing to do, but we'll see. And shut down. All right. Off. Stabilize. Okay, well, now let me take some time to plot out the next thing we want to do with this. Okay, I've plotted a burn at apoapsis to match the inclination of the target orbit, and it's gonna cost 3,700 meters per second. Now I've unlocked the top tank, and it looks like we've got a total of 8,954. So, mm, is it possible? I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm deliberately not plotting the burn at periapsis here to actually get it down to this orbit. I won't find out until the next episode. It's possible if you uh, have some experience with Jupiter you probably know already or you can calculate it based on what we've got here, but I'm not gonna say just yet. And we'll save this burn for next time. So I'll add that to the list of things to do and we'll find out next time whether this satellite gets into the target orbit to fill the contract and yeah you, you can probably already tell how, what I think is going to happen but we'll see all right with that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like 
If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.